All right, guys, today I'm going to tell you a little bit about why today is special, Cinco de Mayo. A lot of people don't really know the history of Cinco de Mayo, and they just assume that it's Mexican Independence Day, and that's just not true. It's... You know, it's a special day all its own. It's not the same as the 4th of July here in the United States. Um, you know, it's not the day that Mexico declared independence from Spain. That was uh, its own special day. In fact, Mexican Independence Day is a different day. Um, and you can look that up on your own. Um, I'm not prepared to tell you about that. I sh probably should have. But anyway, um, so... At this point, <clears throat> Mexico was already its own country, and what's special about Cinco de Mayo is Cinco de Mayo is the day that Mexico proves that it can stand on its own as a sovereign nation, that it can defend itself from foreign aggressors. So let's talk about what was going on. Let's give you a little bit of history before we even talk about what happened on that day, Cinco de Mayo. So at this point, Mexico was kind of in a rough spot. It had lost Texas. Texas had declared independence and become its own country. If you're familiar with the Alamo and what happened there, you know, that's what led to Texas independence and then Texas becoming its own country and then eventually a United States, you know, a United States state. Um, as a result of that, the Mexican-American War, which, you know, with the leadership of American President James K. Polk, which happened to be from North Carolina, um, they in ended up losing almost the entire Southwest um, New Mexico, Arizona, California. You know, so Mexico was in a pretty rough spot. Um, financially, morally, um, mo morally, morale-wise. Uh, so they, you know, they were down in the dumps. You know, they needed a victory. Um, they didn't know where it was going to come from. So, you know, along comes, you know, another hit. You know, they were um, a country that was in financial ruin and they had to default, which means... You know, they had to admit that they had no way to repay some of their debts. They had to go to some nations in Europe, namely Great Britain, France, and Spain, and say, we don't have the money to pay you back. We, we can't pay you, Great Britain, Spain, France. We can't pay you the money we owe you. And, of course, these European governments were not happy to hear that... Oh, hey, Jack. Um, we're not happy to hear that they didn't have the money. So, what did they do? They sent the navy of their countries to blockade um, the city of Veracruz and demand reimbursement. So, Mexico, you know tried to diplomatically smooth things over. And they were successful with Britain and Spain. You know, they sent their emissaries and said, hey, Britain, Spain, we still got, you know, we don't have money, but we've got resources, we've got copper reserves, we've got gold reserves, we've got iron, we've got other stuff, we've, we've got oil a little bit, so you just give us a little bit of time to dig all this stuff up, we'll eventually turn that into money, and we'll get you your money, you just gotta give us time. And, you know, Britain and Spain, you know, were reasonable and pulled their navies out and, you know, agreed to some very 
reasonable on their side treaties that would eventually get them some pretty uh, good trade terms. But France, on the other hand, was led by a guy named Napoleon III, which was Napoleon Bonaparte's grandson, who wanted to carve himself out a little empire just like Grandpa had. So, instead of being reasonable and taking himself some good trade terms like Britain and, and Spain did, little Napoleon III decided he was going to get himself an empire just like Grandpa had, and, um, well, and we all know what happened to Grandpa's empire, right? So, um, Napoleon III sends in 6,000 6, 6, troops into a little city uh, called Puebla de Los Angeles, like Puebla, you know, the... A Puebla is like, hmm, I should probably look up what the word actually means, but like it's like a city, it's like a town, it's like a township of the angels, it's de Los Angeles is what that means, um, and like established that as his headquarters, um, and they're under the, uh, <clears throat> I, I can't really pronounce this guy's name, you guys know how... You know, I'm usually good with French names, but this guy's got, like, a Z on the end of his name, and I've never really encountered that in a French name. Um, General Charles de Laurence, it, like, it's L-O-R-E-N-C-E-Z. Like, I, if, if that Z wasn't there, I would just say Laurence. But, like, like that Z kind of makes you want to, like, Laurence. So, I don't know, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd ask, you know, one of my students in my first core, but, you know, I can't do that right now. So, dang it. But, this guy I can pronounce... This is who Mexico sends in to Puebla to kick him out. This guy, General Ignacio Zaragoza. And um, different sources tell me different things. So, um, so Ignacio, had, Ignacio Zaragoza, depending on which source, he has between 2,000 and 5,000. I like to imagine he has the lower number because it makes it more heroic what he does. Um, the French general, you know, has roughly around 6,000 to 7,000. That's, you know, in most sources, give him the higher-ish number. So, so Zaragoza is definitely the undergog no matter what. Um, you know, whether you go with the high numbers or the low numbers, Zaragoza going into Puebla de Los Angeles has the lower amount of troops. He has the, 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 his troops are uh, slightly worse equipped. The French troops um, coming out of the Napoleonic War are, mm, man, like, the French, their reputation for being, um, not good fighters is not deserved. Um, the French are rough, tough dudes. Um, even, even when they surrendered, um, during World War II, and, like, the French government surrendered. The French people kept fighting. Like, so, the, the, this reputation that the French have for some reason, that they're not fighters, that they're not tough, look up the French Foreign Legion and read about them, and then tell me that the French people aren't fighters. Yeah, just look, do your own research on the French and their fighting reputation. 
you know, from multiple sources. And, like, these are formidable. Like, Zaragoza is walking into a hornet's nest with less troops. Like, like he's about to do something heroic. And so... The French general has, has had a chance to fortify the town, so it's a strong box. Zaragoza is able to, you know, since, you know, he's familiar with the territory, he's able to send his troops around in such a way that, you know, they fight from dawn to dusk. It's, you know, I'm... I wonder if there's a movie that's been made about it. If there hasn't been a movie made about it, this is a fantastic movie opportunity out there, kids, for you to grow up and become a director and to make just the best over-the-top action movie out of this battle if it hasn't been made yet. Like, to get together a crew of just... The, the biggest stars, the biggest action movie people, and just to make it like the guy who plays the Mandalorian would be perfect for Zaragoza. Um, and just to make this just the biggest summer blockbuster of a battle movie because he it's literally an underdog story. Um, because they should not have won this battle. That's why it's such a big deal. And that's why it's celebrated across, you know, anywhere that there are, you know, pockets of, you know, Mexican culture. This battle is celebrated because they should not have won. And, like, when Zaragoza went into this town, you know, they kind of understood, like, hey, guys, like, the French think they won this battle because, honestly, they should have. You know, they really kind of should have won that battle. And they didn't. The Mexican army under Zaragoza destroyed that French army. Rolled them up into a little ball... And threw them out of that city. They fought from dawn to dusk. And by the time the sun went down, that city was free of the French. And that, my friends, is why they celebrate and we celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Because of Zaragoza and his victory over the French at the Battle of Puebla. And they renamed, they renamed Puebla de San Angela, de, uh, Puebla de Los Angeles, Puebla de Zaragoza, in honor of the general. And I cannot think of any greater honor as a military leader than having the city that you liberated named after you, I guess then having thousand, hundred millions of people around the world celebrating the day of your victory by eating delicious food and celebrating your victory every year. And that is what it's all about. It's not Mexican Independence Day. It's something better. It's the day an underdog won the victory. And I, you know, that's great. You know. Ending the video now, because if I don't, I'll keep rambling. Miss you, kids.